20 years later. And although President Obama ended the U.S. military presence there at the end of 2011, around 2,500 American troops are still there today assisting the Iraqis in their fight. Tonight, our prime focus brings you the story of four service members who all did tours in Iraq. They reflect on the mission and whether or not it was worth it, including ABC's very own Stephanie Ramos. I was about to graduate from college, wanted a career in journalism. Growing up, I never thought the military would be in my future until the 9-11 attacks. I joined the U.S. Army Reserve soon after. Five years later, I got that call. It's 4.15 in the morning on Tuesday, and we're waiting to go to Baghdad. I no longer carried a purse, instead, a nine mil. I wondered how I would get through this. My boyfriend at the time, now husband, gave me a small handheld camera so I could document everything, not for TV, but for ourselves, for our family. So right now, they're simulating a convoy. How do we react to an IED? With it, I was able to capture everyday minutiae. My walks to the office in the middle of a sandstorm, the place I called home for a year, my new friends, the Iraqi kids we worked with, while firefights took place not far from where I slept and worked. Many people helped me through. My family's emails, care packages, the Iraqis who welcomed me, an American soldier to their land, and those that didn't. Their country was at war with ours, and we were a constant reminder. It was a very difficult year. There were close calls. But a year later, we made our way back. A moment of pure joy, but also sadness for the country whose future was unknown. Looking back on it now, it's like so much has happened since then, and it's all good. Uh, but I learned so much about myself that year and ever since then, and it just really shows me how much of an impact the Army has had on my life. 20 years later, here I am again, packing, but this time for a very different assignment. Let's go. So let's start with introductions. Israel Del Toro Jr., retired CMS sergeant, served 22 years as a special warfare fighter. I was there in Iraq in the beginning. Shoshana Johnson. U.S. Army, deployed in 2003, shot twice, captured 22 days as a prisoner of war. In brief ram, I'm a lieutenant colonel in the United States Space Force. I previously served 18 years in the Air Force where I deployed as part of Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2004 and then went back in 2017 and 18 as an international affairs officer. Thank you for being here, all of you. You all have a very unique background. You all had different paths in the military, and that's what I love about the military. It really brings together this random group of people from all over the country, and you're, you're, you're working with them, you're in tight quarters with them, you're deploying overseas with them. It's, a, it's very, very unique. We were all deployed to Baghdad, Iraq. We all had very different experiences. So Shoshana, talk a little bit about your time when you deployed. You were a mom when you yeah. deployed to Iraq. And yeah. your daughter was how old? She was two. Two years old. As a mom, what was that moment like for you? It's what we do, <laughs> you know? As a family, a military family, we've gone through this process so many times. Our family is military. My dad is a Desert Storm vet, great uncles, cousins. We all served, my sister served. I was in JROTC in high school and everything like that. We're also immigrants from Panama. Emotionally, yes, you're leaving your kid behind. But I was also the kid that got left behind when my dad deployed. Of course, you want to you want to see all those milestones. I had already missed her first birthday. I missed her first words. I missed her first steps because we we're training and stuff like that. My only thing was to get home to see her become 
a grown woman. And talk to us a little bit about that. When you were, when you were there in Iraq, what happened? March 23rd, my company went into the city with a Nazaria before it was secure. We were ambushed. We lost 11. Eight of us were captured, taken to Baghdad, where we spent 22 days in captivity. We heard the conflict going on constantly around us, you know, just hoping and praying that we'd be found. There were incidents that where they weren't so nice, and there was other incidents where I was surprised at the kindness I was shown. During my captivity, they actually performed an operation to clean out the wounds in my legs. I'm very grateful that they took the time to do that. I don't know if I'd be here or if I had legs without that kindness. What was going through your mind during that time that you're, you're being held? Lots of prayer, lots of hope of seeing my daughter and my family again. I was thinking, well, why, why did this happen to me? I think now that I've returned home, I ask more of the questions of why me? You know, nine people died. Why am I here? And it's something I struggle with, well, 20 years later. And I'll probably struggle with it for the rest of my life. Brie, you deployed to Iraq in 2004, right? Pre-transition. It was just a year into the start of the war. What was that like? My very first night there, uh, I tried to go to sleep, you know, in a tent with a bunch of other people, and the air raid sirens went off. And I thought, oh my god, what, what do I do? Do I roll out of bed? Do I hide under the bed? Do I put my body armor on? Do I get out? Do I go somewhere? And I look around the tent, and everyone who had been there a lot longer is just either sound asleep, or they looked around, and they went right back to sleep. <laughs> and Standard. when I asked in the morning, well, what do we do? And they said, by the time the air raid siren goes off, either you're dead or you're fine. So just go back to sleep. OK, that's going to be hard to do for a while. But eventually, you just pick up that attitude. You're like, I'm fine. Uh, I'm going to be OK. And I'm going to carry on with the mission. You returned, Brie, to Iraq in 2018. What was that like, seeing Iraq early on in the war in 2004 and then returning so many years later. Seeing the difference in the base and how run down certain aspects of it were, yet they were still able to accomplish the mission. It was just a night and day operation, but still to see the pride they had in their pilots. I mean, th those guys were like gods over there with the skills that they developed. It was just a dramatic shift in tone for what the base looked like, how it operated. DT, you were deployed to Bosnia, to Afghanistan, to Iraq. Tell us about the job that you had while you were in Iraq. So my job, what we do is call in airstrikes. So we are the guys there on the ground with Army, Marines, Navy, Special Operations, you know, as their fire element. You know, knowing that, that I have that opportunity, that, that ability to take care of my teammates just by what I did was awesome because I knew I was going to take care of my guys. So is it dangerous? Well, obviously, you can see by my parents, yeah, it is dangerous. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being out there with my guys. Talk a, a little bit about your journey and, and when you were in Afghanistan. You know, I was out there with a team of scouts when I got hit 2005, now December. And, you know, you hear the stories of your life flashes in front of you. And for me, and I really believed it. Man, when I got hit, like I, you know, going down the road, uh, across this creek, and then I feel this intense heat blast on my left side. And I was like, in my head, I was like, I got it, we just got hit. And then that's where those flashes, things that were gonna happen that were distinct that I remember was uh, like me and my wife were, had tried to get married three different times. Uh, and we were finally gonna get married by the church, you know, cause every time we tried, I deployed. But the last week was like me teaching my boy how to play ball because I was a ball player. And then something told me to get out of this truck and popped out of it and tried to run to the creek. And the flames overtook me and I collapsed. And I'm thinking here, it's like, this is it. And it's like, I've broken my promise to my family that I always will come back. 80% of my body had 30 degree burns. Uh, that was given a 15% chance to live. You were definitely tougher than your disabilities and circumstances, what motivated you to stay in and re-enlist yeah. in 2010? I knew I could teach, get the next, next generation of operators ready. 
And sometimes people say, is that really the first face we want to show these young troops? And my answer to them was like, you know what? If they look at me and see the reality of what this job could do mm -hmm. and still want to do it, those are guys I want right there. When you look back at your time there, what do you think? Was it worth it? Would you do it all over again? Would you sign up? I would, in a heartbeat. What about you, Shoshana? It's not about the conflict. It's about being in service. It's about being a soldier. I would do it all over again. It's that camaraderie. Yeah. I think the fact that I hit 20 years a few months ago and am still serving answers that question. Absolutely yes, because not only do I feel that my service has been valuable and a part of something greater than myself that I truly believe in, but it also paves the way for the next generation to continue the legacy, to continue to protect the freedoms that we cherish and the rights that we hold so dear. Thank you, you all. Stephanie? How about me? Would was you it? say? Would you? Absolutely. I think it was worth it. It was a worthwhile experience. I learned a ton while I was there in Baghdad. So yes, the answer to that question is yes, I, I would. Thanks, DT, for putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Thank you all for your service. And I, you know, we hear that a lot. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. But I, I don't know how it is for you guys, but I appreciate it every single time that I hear that because it is a sacrifice. It, it, it's a sacrifice not just for yourself, but for your entire family. And uh, it is appreciated. We are so grateful for their dedication and service. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.